And finally, new rule, if you want to know why your kids are so bratty, entitled, and always asking for your credit card, check their Spotify playlists. Because the messages they're hearing are a full 180 from what kids used to hear when they turned on the radio. Sinead O'Connor will be in the mo in memoriam reel at the Grammys this Sunday, and it would be great if they quoted what she said when she once pulled out of the show in protest. She said, there is an emphasis in pop music on materialism, and it's not right to give people the message that they can fill their emptiness with material things. So how about this year for a new Grammy category? Best song where no one brags about buying a lot of shit. <laughs> Before 1990, there were like two songs ever that glorified money. Money, that's what I want. <laughs> and Material Girl. <laughs> well, uh, here's a short sampling of some more recent offerings. And that's just the ones that have money in the title. <laughs> Why does this matter? Because nothing molds teenage hearts and minds like music and music culture. This is true across generations. When you turn 12, you're done with your parents and start getting raised by pop stars. <laughs> the... <laughs> the older people have the money and the power, but kids rule the charts. And the lyrics of your youth are burned into your brain like that time you saw your father getting out of the shower. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember a lot from eighth grade. Don't, don't get me on the formula for the radius of a circle. But if you asked me to finish the lyric, all you need is, I'm pretty sure I could come up with love. But if I asked a kid today to finish that lyric, what would they say? I'm not sure, but I know what their heroes say. They say things like, diamonds on my neck, I like boarding jets, but nothing in this world that I like more than checks. And sure, it started in rap, but everybody does it now. Damn, I love the Jag, the Jet, and the Mansion. Even country music has songs like Rolex on a Redneck. <laughs> really? <laughs> the band Florida Georgia Line has one about how pimpy their truck is. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe this kind of unbridled lusting for material things is actually the kind of grooming parents should be worried about. We went from, so we don't have a pot, but at least I'm sure of all the things we got, to, I want to be a billionaire so fucking bad. <laughs> Kids blame my generation for ruining the planet, but good luck saving it, kids, if this is what you're always dreaming about, always hearing a drumbeat that happiness results from getting things, things that a vast majority don't have. The pop stars of my youth, their message to me was that what made them happy was available to me, too. Even though we ain't got money, I'm so in love with you, honey. <laughs> I don't need no money. I've got all the riches, baby. One man can claim. Can't buy me love. You don't have to worry if you got no money. People on the river are happy to give. The monkeys sang, our good times start and end without dollar one to spend. But how much, baby, do we really need? Kanye says, Lamborghini, mercy, your chick, she's so thirsty. I <laughs> I'm in that two-seat Lambo with your girl. She's trying to jerk me. <laughs> to which the monkey said, it was more of a rhetorical question. <laughs> John Lennon said, imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. And 10,000 rappers said, we can't and we don't want to. <laughs> and you know what? You know what, I don't blame them. 
I get where this comes from. There is a racial element to this. Suburban white hippie kids had the luxury of being anti-materialistic because they were never denied material things in the first place. There's a reason Jimmy Buffett didn't sing about bling. He was already eating a cheeseburger in paradise. <laughs> But the history of black people in America is the history of being denied the means and often even the right to buy stuff, including a home in the neighborhood you might want to live in. So when the long denied finally becomes available, there's going to be some flaunting. If you were excluded from luxury and then finally got it, you wouldn't want to shut up about it either. But forever? And not just in rap. Everybody does it. And if, you, and if your answer to that is, okay, boomer, that's, that's not an answer. And vomiting an inventory of your possessions doesn't make you a poet. And... And... It's been done to death. Aren't you tired of it? I'm old? This shit is old. <laughs> yeah. Get a second idea for a song. <laughs> well, <clears throat> actually, there is one. Sadness. Hmm, maybe they're connected. Yeah, Spotify actually has data on the types of songs the kids like, and it shows that Gen Z's number one search last summer was sad. Artists like Billie Eilish and Demi Lovato have pioneered a whole new genre called sad bops. A good beat, you can dance to it, and then you want to slit your throat. <laughs> I'm just saying maybe they're connected. The good news is I've seen the music industry clean up its act before. Not with sexual assault, they're still doing that. <laughs> but, but at least with the message of the music, which for quite a long time was dominated with tearjerkers like slob on my knob, like corn on the cob, and <laughs> bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks, and s slut, you think I won't choke no whore? It was ugly, ugly, very sexist and very homophobic. There was iced tea and ice cube, but no ice capades. <laughs> and we were okay with it until we weren't. And maybe it's time now. It's not to be okay with teaching kids you're only as good as how much stuff you have.